Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's uh, a great pleasure uh, to be able to address the IOSCO President's Committee meeting, and I welcome you to Athens. Uh, I hope you'll have a, a good time uh, in, uh, in Greece, that you don't spend all your time stuck in this lovely ballroom and that you get to appreciate uh, the beauties of the city, and for those of you who are um, uh, football fans, there's a big European game taking place tonight. Please root for the Greek team. It is actually taking place in, uh, in Athens, so wish them success. Now, I would, uh, I would like to, first of all, uh, thank uh, the Hellenic Capital Markets Commission uh, and its uh, president, uh, Mrs. Vasiliki Lazaraku, um, uh, for her invitation to speak at this prestigious event. Congratulations for bringing this event uh, um, uh, to Athens. And it gives me the opportunity uh, to share with you um, uh, some thoughts on the important role of capital markets, uh, both uh, uh, in Greece uh, and the fast-changing global economic landscape, as this is shaped by mega trends of climate change, which I understand is the topic of uh, this year's gathering, demographics, increased economic competition, and unfortunately, renewed uh, geoeconomic and geopolitical uncertainty. And the global and European economies uh, have proved uh, rather resilient in the face of consecutive major adverse shocks. Uh, as well as the ensuing monetary tightening and the fiscal normalization. Nevertheless, I think it's fair to say that we are not yet uh, out of the woods. In 2023, growth in Europe was rather subdued. 2024, um, we only expect uh, a modest um, uh, uptick. Uh, Euro area inflation, though declining, I think has been more persistent than expected, especially when it comes to the price of food. Uh, while I see significant uh, you know, growth downside uh, uh, risks. And these, of course, uh, include the, the possibility of uh, renewed uh, uh, energy shocks. Uh, uh, I see general complacency when it comes to the prices of energy. I don't think it is totally justified. There's always a risk of continued inflation persistence, and of course, the elephant in the room, uh, the geopolitical instability. And another important source of economic risks is related to climate-related disasters occurring uh, with the increased frequency and severity. We know something about that problem we suffered last year, both from catastrophic um, wildfires, but also from catastrophic floods, the total <coughs> bill just for the floods uh, in uh, central Greece uh, uh, in terms of uh, um, building back resilient infrastructure is going to exceed uh, 3 billion euros. But, but with it, this challenging global environment, I think it's fair to say that the Greek economy uh, is uh, uh, Europe's uh, positive uh, um, uh, surprise. And, uh, you also had a chance to hear, I understand, from the Minister of Finance, but let me just give you my sort of um, very quick uh, uh, sort of assessment of the state of play of the Greek economy. Uh, we have looked, seen the growth numbers. We've been able to significantly outperform um, the European uh, uh, average. Uh, uh, after a long period of a deep, deep financial crisis, uh, our goal has always been to put the convergence process uh, back on track. And in order to do that, we simply need to grow faster. Than the, uh, than the Eurozone average. Unemployment, which is always a major economic and social concern, has fallen to its lowest level uh, for 15 years. Then inflation remains a challenge, but has declined significantly and is gradually converging to its target value. Uh, public finances are in order. Um, Greece has returned to primary um, uh, surpluses, um, not uh, all European countries have been as uh, fiscally disciplined uh, as Greece. I hope I don't offend some of you by making um, uh, this, this comment. Uh, uh, but combined with the accelerated economic uh, uh, growth, uh, the result has been the fastest reduction in public tech to GDP uh, ever recorded uh, in the Eurozone over a three-year uh, period. We've had positive developments in the banking uh, system. 
which include continuous uh, deposit inflows and steady uh, improvement of capital adequacy uh, and, uh, and, and quality. And of course, there's been also a lot of significant foreign interest uh, in obtaining stakes in the Greek banks. At the same time, we continue implementing ambitious reforms, uh, improving the business environment, attracting record levels of foreign direct investment and portfolio investment, increasing the share of investment and exports to GDP. Not many people know that uh, Greece uh, is already at, uh, uh, our exports of goods and services are already at 50% of GDP. It's been a significant improvement, significant uh, change over the past uh, years. Uh, and of course, we were just uh, elected a year ago with a strong reform uh, uh, mandate, which we're implementing across the board, justice, civil service, education, tax avoidance and tax ev evasion, um, the electronic transactions that uh, dominated uh, um, the way we did business during the pandemic uh, have really you know, helped us uh, address uh, the question of, uh, of, of the VAT gap. Digitizing the state, this has been a big success uh, of the government, and to name but a few of the reforms that we're currently focused on. So uh, despite the major challenges we have faced in the recent uh, uh, years, the Greek economy has made significant progress, and I think continues to progress on all fronts. And this has been recognized uh, by markets, as evidenced by the significant reduction of Greek government bond yields, um, uh, which uh, uh, are, uh, are now at levels not many people expected them to be four years ago. We got back to investment grade, um, a big sort of, um, sort of vote of confidence by the rating agencies. Uh, and of course, this turnaround has also been mirrored uh, in the performance of our capital markets. The Athens Stock Exchange has been amongst uh, the world's best performers. Uh, while significant progress has also been made in terms of uh, increasing stock market capitalization, the value of transactions, new um, uh, funds raised from uh, the stock market, and of course, the participation of uh, serious long-term um, value-oriented international uh, investors. Uh, and of course, we are also developing other segments of the capital markets, Corporate bond trading has been expanding. We have a significant number of private equity and venture capital funds, which now operate in Greece. As someone who started my professional career in venture capital many years ago, I'm particularly pleased uh, about this uh, development. Uh, so we have a new sort of ecosystem which is emerging. I would like to stress the operation of the Hellenic Development Bank Investments, which is, has played an important role as a catalyst for mobilizing private resources um, uh, and which constitutes a significant upgrade uh, also of the non-banking financial system. And having said that, um, the scope for further development uh, of the Greek capital markets I think is uh, still substantial uh, and the importance of achieving this uh, objective uh, is uh, uh, timelier uh, than ever. Uh, and I think this um, uh, stems uh, from two necessities. The first uh, is uh, about covering the large investment gap of the previous decade. And we should not forget that what happened in Greece during the crisis was unprecedented. The largest contraction, contraction ever recorded in any OECD country after um, uh, the Second World uh, uh, War. So we have made significant progress in covering this investment gap. Uh, and indeed, Greece has been the country presenting the highest increase in investment over the past five years. But we fully realize that we still have you know, some way to go. The second, of course, is related to the new policy priorities that have uh, risen for all countries in Europe and beyond. The green transition, the digital transition, increasing productivity and competitiveness, making Europe relevant uh, again in this sort of changing geopolitical landscape. And addressing these needs is necessary in order to ensure continued and substantial economic growth and to increase the uh, living standards of our citizens, but also in the context of the present 
geopolitical environment, this also includes the necessity of upgrading Europe's defense and security capabilities. Uh, let me open a parenthesis here by pointing out that Greece never benefited from the peace dividend after the um, collapse of the Berlin War uh, for the simple reason that we faced our own geopolitical challenges. We've always been spending more than 2% uh, of our GDP uh, on defense. If you do the math over 20, 25 years, you know, 1% of GDP, the difference between spending 2% or 1%, that's actually a, a lot of money. But I think Europe is, is, is waking up to the reality that we need um, to be um, independent when it comes to our defense uh, capabilities. And of course, all these combined require large investments. Public funds will make a substantial contribution, particularly in areas where market failures or major externalities are present. But we have restrictions in, in our fiscal space. They will not suffice to cover the full set of needs. And this is why I have called for an international coordination to also increase efficiency in investment spending. And in the European context in particular, I have proposed common financial instruments to cover common European investment needs, especially in the areas of the green transition, but also in the areas of defense. Uh, uh, recently co-signed a letter uh, with uh, Prime Minister Tusk uh, of Poland um, calling for a flagship European defense project, which would be um, a sort of, uh, imagine a European Iron Dome that would uh, uh, offer all European countries protection for missile defense. <coughs> when we talk about mobilizing uh, European funds at the European level for common defense initiatives, we need to be very concrete in terms of how these funds will be used. And in my mind, this could be a flagship project that uh, mobilizes uh, European resources for the common good uh, of uh, protecting uh, our European airspace. But of course, multilateral development banks can also finance a substantial volume of the investments which are necessary, and also through the mobilization of private investment resources. Banking finance can also finance a substantial part of the elevated investment needs, particularly in view of the very large amount of savings firms and households have placed with them in the form of deposits. Banks, however, also face important limitations in terms of financing many projects related to the twin transition and the drive to increase competitiveness as these involve higher risks than banks are typically willing to carry. So particularly in view of regulatory changes aiming to increase uh, financial stability following the global uh, financial crisis, we need to be aware that this is a fact. Therefore, it is necessary to strengthen capital markets. This effort has both a domestic dimension, in the case of Greece, but also an international one. And starting from the domestic dimension, we have defined with uh, the support of the European um, the Commission, um, the DG reform, a national strategy for the development of our capital uh, uh, market built on six pillars. Each of them is dedicated to a specific area of improvement, regulatory <coughs> supervisory framework, investment opportunities in ESG, the fintech ecosystem, the taxation framework, the operating framework of the capital markets, and the market demand side, including SMEs and retail investors, and of course the question of financial literacy. Uh, I think it's an important structural reform that will strengthen our financial system and uh, increase further the volume of investment in Greece, particularly in high value added activities. And moving on to the international dimension, as in other areas, Greece sees considerable advantage in policy coordination. Now, in recent months, as you're very well aware, a very active debate is ongoing on strengthening the European Capital Markets Union. We fully, we fully endorse this effort, as we agree uh, with the high importance and urgency attached to making progress in the Capital Markets Union. I've been at the European Council for five years now. We've had these discussions numerous times. But we have to be honest. Progress has been limited 
in my mind, it is simply inexcusable that European citizens, constrained by fragmented, nationally underdeveloped capital markets, are forced to channel their hard-earned savings to capital markets in the U.S. and elsewhere, only to see the fruit of the savings to come back and bite them through stronger investments outside of Europe. So it is imperative that the European capital markets are upgraded to the standards that our citizens, but also our firms, deserve. And um, among others, uh, we uh, do um, support uh, uh, measures aiming towards harmonization, convergence, and integration in such areas as insolvency frameworks, listing requirements, accounting standards, and further one, we also support the development of the European securitization market, but in a way that is consistent with financial stability. We also support providing the right tax framework for firms and investors to channel savings to investments through capital markets. And I want to emphasize my endorsement of the measures aiming to strengthen the financing of small and medium-sized enterprises from capital markets. And of course, let me come back to the question of how do we enhance financial literacy, particularly among our youth, children, but also vulnerable groups. These are very important for ensuring a critical mass of supply and demand of saving instruments traded in capital markets. And at the European Council in April, we agreed to closely follow progress in the implementation of the measures agreed in March. And we will continue discussing the future of CMU, also in the light of the recently published letter report, which stresses particular emphasis on capital markets uh, union, but also the shortly forthcoming Draghi report on the single market and competitiveness, I think will make very similar points. So going forward, I believe that we should further increase our degree of ambition, particularly in the area of supervision. I think it is difficult to argue against the benefits of an integrated supervision for a capital markets union fostering substantial cross-border flows, specifically within a single currency area. It's important that rules are common. It's also important that these rules are applied in a uniform and standard manner. And uh, as a result, I believe the whole of the European economy uh, and individual member states, particularly those in the process of convergence, such as Greece, will benefit substantially if the supervision of national capital markets is reformed, in our mind, along the lines of the successful SSM single banking supervision, which I think sets a successful precedent. And this will increase intra-union capital flows. It will boost investment financing, particularly in fast-growing convergence economies but also it will uh, channel more capital towards you know, high-tech sectors, critical technologies, startups, you know, the question of uh, whether a company such as Tesla would ever have existed that could ever have been financed in the European capital markets keeps coming back to the table of the council and I'm afraid we don't have uh, you know, a concrete answer yet. But to maximize the potential of the capital markets union, um, uh, for enhancing long-term growth in Europe, I think we need to meet another requirement, and that is the completion of the European Banking Union through the introduction of its third pillar, the European Deposit Insurance Scheme. These two projects are inherently intertwined. As, not, as national banking systems are fragmented, I think so will capital markets, and this is another area which we should now draw our attention. The prospects of progress on the banking union have now increased uh, through our agreement on European fiscal rules last December. We have now reduced the scope for a banking fiscal nexus risk. Therefore, we should endeavor uh, as we move towards a new sort of European cycle after the European elections to pursue these interconnected projects simultaneously so as to endow the European firms and citizens with the best possible financial infrastructure enabling them to grow and prosper, respectively. Ladies and gentlemen, let me conclude by saying that the economic and financial landscape we live in has changed drastically over the past five years, not always towards the better. We face new challenges. We have now new important priorities. And 
among the latter, a major one is financing increased investment needs, particularly for the green transition, but also other uh, important policy priorities. Be a little blunt, there is a discontinuity, and you know that well, between uh, the level of our ambitions in terms of what we want to do as Europe and the financial tools we have at our disposal. And these require the mobilization of significant resources which traditional financing approaches, financial intimidation models, uh, and institutional setup cannot necessarily deliver in their entity. And in this context, the role of capital markets in meeting these investment objectives is absolutely critical. High quality and effective securities regulation is key for capital <coughs> markets to fulfill their growth enhancing mission. And your role as uh, security regulators is of paramount importance for national and international financial stability, long-term growth, uh, and of course the prosperity of our citizens. And be assured that uh, um, Greece, under our growth-friendly government, fully supports your mission. So I wish you a very successful conference, and I hope you'll have a chance to also appreciate the beauties uh, uh, of, uh, uh, of Athens. So thank you very much for inviting me.